All right, you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Juneteenth celebration. Welcome, welcome. You guys are in for a treat today. Let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Karen Baxter. I am Ms. Creative CEO. And what I do is I help crafters and, and makers <coughs> excuse me, level up their mindset and their skill set so they can take their businesses out of the back room, into the boardroom, and straight to the bank. And we're going to get right to it because we have a limited amount of time because we have a whole series. We've got four, four amazing crafters coming to the stage tonight, today, <coughs> excuse me, to teach us so many amazing different things. And I want to make sure that I give all the attention to that person. So I'm going to bring her up right now. Her name is Orion Wonder. Hey, Orion, how are you? Hey. <laughs> I am so excited that you are here. I am super excited that you're here and able to teach these folks about this wire. I have a few of your rings and they are gorgeous Thank and you. I love it. So we gonna, I want you to be able to take your time and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool that your husband is with us and your children are watching and playing yeah. along. That's an amazing <laughs> thing. So tell us a little bit about yourself really, really quick. And then let's get right into it. Alrighty, so I go by Orion Elise, by most people call me. I am a mother, a creator, a crafter, just an all-around experience, honestly, if you're asking me. Um, I started doing wire about two years ago, uh, officially. Um, that was the first of, that was my leeway into all of the other crafts that I started doing. Honestly, I got into wire and then it kind of went, I went down the rabbit hole from there. So wire is always gonna be my first love because it's the one place you can spiral and it's okay. <laughs> I got that. I see what you did there. You see what I, did I see there. what you did there. <laughs> so um yeah, I'm a mom of three, so we're constantly traveling, having a good time. My daughter is here with me today. She's also going to be learning some techniques uh as she's a crafter as well. So we try to keep the fun stuff in the family and spread it as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know if is there anything else that you would like to know? I would I I wanna just point out these amazing pieces of art on behind you like that yellow one i'm yeah. gonna have to we're gonna have to have a discussion about her <laughs> we're gonna have to have a discussion about her and are those earrings are those um right there so, or locks on the other side hair jewelry over here we have more rings actually rings. this is my okay. whole ring collection on this side okay um okay. hold it up we want to see yeah well, let's let's bring you uh Yes. So we ah, have, I love them. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of different designs that I've um, ventured into doing. Um, some of my favorites are these here because they're yes. an adjustable size. So you don't necessarily have to know your ring size to be able to enjoy it. Um, I have this one, which is another favorite of mine, live wire, because that's what I am. <laughs> so I, I love it. myself a ring, a live wire. Um, and then my peace ring is also another uh, favorite of mine. I love wearing these out. I love it. Spreading peace and love and happiness. And so, on. It. And, and so you've been doing this for a while and you're yeah. just kind of coming back. We tend to do that as crafters. We got to explore everything and then we'll come yep. back to yep. our first love. I don't know why yep. we do that, but it is what it is. So in the meantime, we hoard everything else. Yep. And then, Absolutely. you know, it's okay though. I, you know, I digress. I probably <laughs> talking about somebody out there, not me. I don't hoard. You see, you see I started the rings, then I do the paintings, then I have like resin journals that I've done, pens, just it out of, out of hand, honestly. It's out of control. But I, I love, love it. it. I love it. <laughs> Let's speaking out of hand, let's talk about this hand on the screen. And let's okay. get right to it. Boom. Boom. All right. So um, today during this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this ring right here in two separate ways. One way will be with you knowing your ring size. The other way will be with you um, making an adjustable size. So you don't necessarily have to know your ring size, but you can still enjoy it and um, wear it as you please. Uh, 
for the rings that I make, I typically I typically use the 16 gauge wire because I like to add beads and other accessories to my rings. But a lot of times you can use the uh, 14 and 12 gauge wire as well. And I will show you what that looks like. Um, so when you're in the store, all of the wire obviously is gonna look the same because wire does tend to look the same. However, the higher the number, the thinner, the, the thicker the wire. So basically this 12 gauge wire is gonna be your thicker gauge. You're gonna need a sturdy plier to um, cut these. Don't use, do not, I repeat, do not use these pliers to cut this wire. It is not gonna work out that great for you. So you wanna get a nice thick, a thick plier to cut these. Uh, you have your 14 gauge wire, which is a little bit thinner. It's also a really good wire um, to use for rings, especially something like this, where it's a simple design, you can kind of have a bigger effect on your finger. And then you have the 16 gauge wire, which is one that I like to use a lot of times, like I said, because I add so many extra details to my rings. I don't want it to look too bulky. So I kind of go for the 16 gauge where I have enough to have a good foundation, but then I can also add my accessories as well. So today we're going to, I'm going to show you everything on the 16 gauge wire. And then again, you can take the same concepts and you can work up a wire or work down. It is absolutely your choice because in the crafting world, you can do what you want. And that's why I love it so much. Um, so the first, th the first thing for making rings that tends to be a concern for everybody is I don't know my ring size. I know that that's like a common issue for everybody. There's so many tricks. Like so most people like to say that if you know your shoe size, your shoe size, your shoe size typically matches the ring size. That's true in most cases, not all. So I've been able to get away with that rule and it has worked for me thus far. However, I have a really big foot. I do have a really big finger too, but I can fit a size 10 on my finger perfectly fine, but I cannot fit a size 10 on my foot. So <laughs> let's start there. So I wanna show everybody um, a quick way. If you don't have a way to purchase the, um, the ring sizer, you can just take a piece of string. I keep forgetting which camera to use. If you can take a piece of string like this, wrap it around your finger, wherever you're gonna have your ring placed now. And also leave yourself like a little bit of wiggle room so that you're not making your rings too tight because you don't necessarily wanna do that to yourself either. So you're gonna wrap that string around your finger and then you're just gonna cut it where the line meets at. So now at this point, you kind of have a good gauge of how much wire you need to have your ring wrap around your finger. So this is a good work, this is a good space to uh, start with as far as knowing how much wire to keep available to wrap around your um, ring mandrel. So my ring mandrel was just here and it just disappeared. Oh, here we go. So this is a ring mandrel and this basically tells you all of your sizes here. I don't know if you guys are seeing this the right way. We are. You okay. So you have your size four all the way to a size 10. There are ring mandrels that are longer and have an extension of sizes. There's also ring mandrels that come with a dent on the inside so that if you're going to be if you're gonna have a bead or any other um, stone or anything like that, it'll, it'll have a divot in there so that the stone fits in um, perfectly. You can take your string now at this point and you can kind of get a, get a good gauge at where your ring size is. And like I told you, I have really big feet fingers. So don't judge me, you know, <laughs> we're gonna have, I have mine that's obviously bigger than a size 10, but roughly a size 10 is gonna be good for me. But as you're, as you're measuring your size, you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna take your string and wrap it onto this ring mandrel just to get a good gauge of what size you should be making your ring so that you know what fits. Okay, now again, I do this so much that the numbers 
it's more unnatural for me to identify the numbers than it is natural for me to identify the numbers. So for teaching purposes, we're gonna have the ruler out, but after a while, you will kind of get a feel of the sizes that you need to make. So most times when I'm making my rings, like I said, I have a bigger finger. I'm using about 12 inches worth of wire. So I will obviously take my wire and measure about 12 inches out, just to have a good foundation of having enough space for my size, having for the size of my finger, having enough space for any um, uh, stones or beads that I wanna put on there or any other designs that I decide to put into my ring. For this particular ring, this ring is going to require you to wrap it twice. So you definitely wanna add a little bit extra for the sake of the wrapping. So I'll show you what I mean uh, by that. I'm gonna do a size nine for the sake of holding this tighter. So I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna bend it onto my ring mandrel all by hand. You don't necessarily have to use any pliers at this point. Uh, the 16 gauge wire tends to move very nicely within your hands. You just have to give nice pushes when um, working with it. You tend, you tend to find the center pretty easy so that by the time you wrap back around, you have your uh, pieces that are even on the other side. If they are not even, it is absolutely okay because at the end of the design, it's, it's still gonna work out for you. Um, so after wrapping, I've got this nice pretty loop here and that makes it nice and easy for me to put this on my finger and wear it like that. Okay, so after getting my loop for my ring and making the base, from this point, I wanna take these two, ex these two pieces that are extended. What I tend to like to do is bend it up and make a nice little curve and then bend this piece down. You don't have to do that, but it tends to, it adds like a nice little curve at the bottom of your spiral, as you see here. So if I have, if I, if I kept it straight, it kind of just would have been a, a straighter design on the, by the end, but with putting the curve in there, it kind of makes a nice little uh, curve for your, the bottom of your spiral. For your next step, you're going to want to take your round nose pliers, which are these right here, if everybody has theirs, you can use these. And then you're going to grab the tip of your wire with the tip of the pliers. And you're gonna kind of hold it with a grip like this. When you're when you have you need to make sure you have a good grip on it just so that you're able to kind of push this forward. Now, these aren't the pliers that I typically use. I'm using these again for demonstration purposes, but we're gonna make it work anyway. So you wanna kind of make a little loop to start off with like that. Am I going too fast or am I good? You guys, are we Anybody good? have any questions? Okay, okay. You're so good. That's just how good you are. That's okay. what that is. Okay. <laughs> just want to make sure. Okay, and then so, Another little thing, a little little tidbit um, that I didn't know when I started, but I kind of wish I would have known when I started. Um, this tool magic here, turn it this way. The tool magic works really well for coating your pliers to prevent dents from being in them. Now, sometimes you can have the dents in your design and it actually makes it really cool and fun. But you want to make sure, sometimes you just want to make sure that you're not putting too much um, damage onto the wire because metal with metal obviously creates the, um, the scratches in the wire. So having this coating helps to prevent that from happening. Michaels does sell the pliers with the nylon coating on it. It looks something like, where are they at? Mm, I have all my pliers. I would show you guys what the nylon coating looks like, but oh, they're hiding here. You know? So these are well well used pliers, as you can see, but the nylon coating 
again, helps to prevent the um, the scratches on the wire, which is, you know, again, a it's a preference, but much needed. If you cannot find this, a little trick that you can use is um, hot glue, actually, to put on the edge of your pliers to make sure that you can prevent the scratching. So you're gonna grab this, this loop here with your needle nose, Again, getting a good firm grip on it so that you're able to push without this piece moving. And again, you gotta kind of find your sweet spot in your hand. That's one thing about the pliers that I love is that everybody's pliers fits to their own hand. So you have your, you have your own space, your own sweet spots that kind of work best for you when rolling. But you wanna keep grabbing and keep pushing to create your spiral. And you're gonna keep doing that all the way until you get to the bottom. This is so fascinating because my, my spiral would be like all crooked and <laughs> have corners in it. And like, I'm like, it's so perfectly round. It's so smooth. I it is. That. It's <laughs> honestly, it's, after the first few times of you doing this, it becomes like second nature to you. Your hands get used to it. And the, 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 the uh, process becomes easier and more consistent too. You're the, I've noticed right, that, I'm, it, huh? I was saying, Danny said it would be square. And I'm like, <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> So here you have your first spiral for the bottom of the ring. Let me get, she's, she's acting out over here. Stay there, thank you. So you have your first spiral for the one side. And then we're gonna basically repeat the same process that we did on the ones on this side. We're gonna do that same process on the other. So we're gonna grab our round nose pliers again. I'm actually gonna, What's up? It is, it's beautiful. Thank you. I'm actually gonna grab the ones that, these are the ones that I always use. The reason why I didn't use them for um, demonstration purposes is because I've actually taken everything out of the middle because it gives me more of a, a control. Mm -hmm. So that's just, again, a personal preference of mine, but not mandatory for everybody. So again, we're gonna make our loop here. If you can see that, hopefully you can. And then we're gonna grab our needle nose again. Again, finding the sweet spot where it's most comfortable. You wanna make sure that you're not straining your hands too much. You just adjust your hands as needed and adjust the wire as needed to make sure that you're getting your results, but you're also comfortable while doing so. And we're gonna push, push, push. And so this is also spiraled. I know, Marquita, you gonna go out and get some um, wire? <laughs> you know how we are. Yeah, I, I probably have some wire, right? I actually, I do. I have some wire sitting over here. And oh, so. some those pliers, I do. Listen, you know I'm, I'm a crafter, I'm, so I'm ready. To, I'm ready to see your rings. I really am. Girl, I'm ready to see them. <laughs> girl, we need to do a, a contest. Y'all do these spiral rings and let Orion test the or, uh, Oh, look at that! And so here you go. Look at that. That yeah. is and so pretty. One of the reasons why I like this design is because. If you make it too small, it doesn't matter because it looks beautiful, like literally at any point of your finger. You can wear it kind of like towards the top. You can wear it towards the bottom. It works no matter where you put it. So that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy this design and wanted to share it with you guys so that you can have something that even if you feel like you messed up, which there are no mistakes in art, um, you can still wear it and you can still enjoy it just the same. So that is the first design. Miss Imani wants to know, what do you do if you don't have a mandrel? Well, oh, good job, Princess. Well, <laughs> Look at Princess over there. Pay attention to ask a question. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
So if you do not have a mandrel, then you're going to have to rely heavily on your ruler. Once again, I said, when I'm doing rings, most times I like to use about 15, I mean, about uh, 14 inches worth of wire, 12 to 14, depending on what I'm using. If you do not have a mandrel, go get a marker. That'll help you create the um, curve in the wire. Once you've created the curve, I don't actually have a marker with me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so that I can demonstrate it for you. But any, in any case, if you take a marker, it's gonna, marker right uh, I need a, like a Sharpie. I'm not a Sharpie, a, a craft marker, like a thick marker. Bless your heart. We got people here. There, um, Janae. She's she's in Chicago, and so she's gonna go and find a mandrel and some wire in Chicago, so she can get it while she's on a trip. Because <laughs> right, we can't so wait. <laughs> I don't need it to write. It's just basically the 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 curve. So, if you do not have a mandrel, you want to find something that is cylinder in your home that can kind of replicate a finger. Um, you can, I'm gonna actually do it so that I'm not just, I'm not gonna talk about it, I'm gonna be about it, you know? Um, <laughs> again, I don't, don't do what I do in this little part because I don't measure every time I do everything by sight because I'm just so used to seeing the lengths. <laughs> you got people, I'm gonna be making rings all day, listen, all listen. evening. <laughs> and please, if you're making them, please share them with me because like I get so excited making them and I love the fact that I get to share that excitement with everybody else. So if you don't have a ring mandrel, this, anything that's cylinder in your home that can copy a finger is going to be your best friend. Um, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so the mandrel obviously gives you sizes, but that is just one size. So that's what you're doing right now. Yeah. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a pull point. I like to call, uh, just because of the curve, I want to kind of still keep it neat when I'm, when I'm done. So I'm going to, if it's bigger, that's fine. You're just going to put it on to wherever your finger is and just kind of pull. and fit it to your finger, pull and push and fit it to your finger. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. It does. All right. I'm just the making thing sure. you're trying to do is get the curve. You're just trying to yeah, get the wanna, curve in there. You okay. definitely want, you want to maintain the curve as much as possible. And then again, you can kind of play with how it feels on your hand. Do not be afraid of bending the wire. What can be done can be undone as well. Um, I don't have it with me, but I have a pair of needle nose pliers that are completely coated um, in nylon. And I use those typically to straighten out my wire. So if there's like a curve or a kink in there that I need removed, then I would just take the needle nose and kind of run it along to straighten it out. That's also a tip. If you have a bend in your wire that you don't want there, you just run your pliers along, the, along there and then just straighten it out as best you can. Do you um, have a, um, are you T? cause now, you know, you know, we're extra. So mm -hmm. we don't want to put all the little jewels and like the ring on your finger, you know, I, my little, so do you have a class that you'll be, that we can learn even more from you? Well, actually I have a little bit of extra time. And so therefore I'm going to make one of these designs. Yay! <laughs> Y'all get some extra goodies today. Who out there right. while you get together? I want to look at this the the um the screen. Anybody making with her? Has anybody made any with her? Show let's let's see what you okay, Miss Molly. Let's see. I'm gonna put you on spotlight. Look oh. at Miss Molly. Oh yes. it's get beautiful. I love it. Oh, so is this your first time? Because that does not look like there's it's no a first way. time. She say, no. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> so beautiful. She's a master. That looks amazing. I love it. Okay. Who else has another one? Anybody else doing it? Okay. Let's see. Okay. Lakita, let's look at you. Hold on. Let's add uh, replace spotlight. There you go. 
Let me see. I need a big screen. Ooh, oh, yes. yes. I, I see like it. it. That's beautiful. It looks good. Now, have you done it before, Laquita? Laquita, you have, you have, see, who doing it for the first time? Okay, <laughs> let's look at me. That's what I want to see. Who doing it for the first time? I, you know, uh, that would be me. Let's see. Miss Molly, you were holding something up. What were you holding up? Oh, you use oh. chapstick. That's a great idea. Beautiful. I love it. Awesome. That's perfect. Awesome. Yeah. And so also with that design too, she just reminded me. So okay. if you, again, if you're, um, if you're making this soap, say you've made this specifically to this size and you get to the end and you're like, oh my gosh, it's too big. You can always pull tighter. You can always pull tighter and then keep spiraling to adjust the size. So thank you for reminding me because that's definitely a tip that you guys will need. If you do, if you if you make it bigger, it's better. So then you're able to kind of pull it top to the size that you need and then wrap it. Spiral it. I love it. So the longer, if you want a really big spiral, you just need longer wire. Really. That's it. That's it. Okay. Okay. You know, we extra. So I might need a really big. Shield, I mean, like I a shield or something on my hand, you know. <laughs> you Captain America today, right? That, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Alrighty, so I actually I can tell already that I didn't pull enough wire for this one, so I'm gonna redo that. Um, with the when you're doing the beads, I'm gonna say that it's it would be best no matter what your ring size is, to always pull about 16 inches worth of wire. It's a lot, but you you're ne you never really know how much of a design you're gonna do. So you wanna give yourself enough wire to pull off any design. Um, the more that you do it, the better you'll get at um, judging, again, how much wire you, you'll need so that you don't have as much waste. Um, but to start out, definitely definitely go around 16 inches to give yourself enough room to play. Because like you said, you might wanna be extra, you know, you might be in the mood to do some extra spirals and extra wrapping, or you might not. And either way, if you don't, you can always cut off, but you can't add on. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're set. So I have my wire cut, and then I also have this cute little fire bead, I guess. It's cute, it's like orange and Yellow. Everybody is saying that you're such a great teacher, Orion. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You hardly have any comments, which means you're very thorough and you're answering <laughs> everybody's comments so they don't even have to ask it. That's oh, amazing. that's awesome. Yeah, I taught <laughs> preschool for 13 years. So ah, there's yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, there's there is that. <laughs> All righty. So for this one, now again, like I said, the reason why I brought the other mandrel up is because when you're doing beads, it is honestly easier to do it with the other mandrel however with this one i like using it on a flat surface because then i know how to judge my design on how it's going to hit against the finger so when the mandrel has that extra space you're not really sure how it's going to roll onto your finger completely because it gives space for the back of the bead but with the back of the bead up against this ring mandrel i kind of already know where the bead is going to hit up against the finger when i put it on um my first my first move is going to be to make, again, the spiral around the ring mandrel. So I always wanna make my wire hug my, my mandrel. And I'm going to do that. It is going to, you wanna hold your bead in place best you can. It is a task sometimes at first, so don't get frustrated. You own the bead, the bead does not own you. You gotta just remind yourself that, okay? You own the bead, the bead does not own you. Does not own you. Okay. Sometimes you got to tell it that. Sometimes you're going to have to say, listen, now, I need you to do this and you're going to have to work with me. Um, so this is what you're going to, this is what you're going to want to end with. Okay. So it's a little off center, but again. Do they make flat back beads? They actually, they do make flat back beads. Um, most of the flat back beads that I have seen have been something like this. So this is a flower ring that I made last year. 
and it is absolutely flat back. Um, the same wire wrapping technique that I'm getting ready to do for this feed here is the same technique that's done here. But again, it makes it kind of, again, a little bit easier to sit up against the ring mandrel as well as your finger. With the design, as you can see, when it goes on, it's not uncomfortable. So after, which is why I do like the flat, the, the round bead hitting up against the mandrel because it makes sure that you, when you're putting the ring on, you're not feeling anything tight or snugging up against, like rubbing up against your um, finger too much to irritate you or anything of that sort. And I'm, and I, oh, also too, I tend to use glass beads, um, glass beads or stone beads mostly. I have not practiced with plastic or um, ceramic beads at all. So that's definitely um, a field that you can venture down if you choose to. Um, what else is there? Okay, so after getting, I have to make this tight again. After getting your bead and your wire held on there nice and taut, you want to kind of bring these two pieces down. So you have this little crisscross situation right here. Then you're going to kind of wrap in this direction. So first, I would kind of like to wrap around first and then do the sides. You can wrap, then do the sides, but for the sake of like design and our extraness that we like to, to do sometimes, I like to add a little extra, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? Zhuzhing. A little zhuzhing. I like that. I'm going to be using that word for the rest of the day. Thank right. you. My husband thanks you in advance. You're welcome. You're welcome, Doug. He's going to be like, I'm pulling my hair out. She gave her a new word. I didn't need that word. She I did not need it. that, Karen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to wrap probably a couple more times. All right, all right, boom. And I kind of feel like at this point, my ring is holding its um, shape enough that I don't necessarily need the ring mandrel to guide it. Um, like I said, I'm gonna wrap one more time and then I will show you guys. I'm sorry, I do make sound effects, I do apologize. We are going to then end this off with our round nose pliers, these ones right here. Um, also too, there is no real, there's no real law to what pliers you choose to use when doing your wire, uh, your wire work. Whatever is most comfortable for you is what, you're gonna you're you're gonna feel most comfortable doing. So I mean, I just personally feel like you should stick with whatever is comfortable to you. Um, so at this point, if if you feel like you're trying to do it with the round nose pliers and it's not necessarily grabbing the way that you want to, you can always move over to your needle nose pliers and um, work with that instead. Whatever makes you comfortable is what's most important, honestly. Miss. Wink X slash. Um, mm -hmm. It was on the the supply list is on the page where you signed up, but I think that's gone. So I'm going to ask Michaels to drop it in the chat if they have it, if they can access it for me. So you can have it. This will be up probably in the next 48, probably Monday. Hopefully it'll be up on. Thank you. Um, I'm Rainy, sorry. Thank you. Um, it'll be up and you'll be able to use, go to Michael's tonight or uh, today. I know Michael's has sent out some coupons because I got them and Ooh. use your rewards and go get some wire and some stuff. And then you can practice or come back uh, probably Monday 
or maybe tomorrow it'll be up and then you can just watch it along with. It's good stuff. Very so good stuff. I, um, I'm at a point where I feel like, okay, that's enough. I don't really feel like rapping anymore. I feel like this is, this has made a statement enough over here. So I'm going to cut the excess. Um, a little tip about cutting wire. Um, sometimes, especially if the wire is kind of small, when you cut the edge, it likes to fly off. You want to kind of make sure you grab the tip and then cut at the same time so that you don't have the loose, the loose pieces going off um, into like the floor or some space that you don't know that it's at because you don't want to step on it later. So I just want to make sure that everybody's safe. While doing the wire, there are some parts where it can get a little dangerous. And that is one of those parts. You want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on all of the loose pieces that you take off. If you have like a bin that you can put it in, once it's done, you can toss it right to the side and you kind of have an idea of where um, all of the pieces are so that you're not hurting yourself uh, later. Um, another thing too is like, so for instance, this is, in my opinion, it's a, a looser, a looser swirl as opposed to this one. Um, you can, I'm trying to see, you can make your adjustments by, by twirling with the needle nose. So you can kind of push and spin at the same time. That's one way that you can make it tighter or you can kind of just move them around and squeeze them together at the end. It's totally up to you. All, this, all the designs that you make with your, like you basically, I want you guys to explore all of the designs that you can possibly do. You don't want it always to look exactly the same each time. Um, that's how you kind of start to build your, your catalog of what you like to do, what your style is. You build your own um, identity within the wire community. All right, so I'm wrapping this one. I'm gonna try to do this one a little bit tighter so you can kind of see the difference. I'm fascinated. <laughs> does does that get rid of the sharp cut end? Um, it, to get rid of that. So, in order to, if you have a, that's a great question too. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to do some things at once. Let me do this part, and then I'm going to answer that question right after. So, if the end is too sharp. You can take a nail file and just buffer the edge of it, and that'll that'll handle that end that edge. Um, and then there's also a way that you can, if, depending on how you have the design, there's a way that you can tuck it underneath. I kind of pushed this one in really hard, so it's going to give me a hard time to get it back out. I just wanted to show you guys how you can basically just tuck it to the side. So if you don't have anything to handle the edges, you want to just make sure that you're taking it and turning it into the design so that it's tucked away and it's not um, open and able to hurt you or anybody that you've made the ring for. Okay. So I'm trying to, hopefully, I don't know if you guys can see that I'm turning it in so that this, so basically that all of the the edges are smooth and you don't have any, any loose or rough edges. And so like this one here, if, if we're putting this on, you can make sure also that this piece is on the outside by pulling it back a little bit. I'm gonna cut this just a little bit. I'm gonna put my edge, my edge on in a spot that I can find it later so that I'm not stepping on it, of course. And that's nice and soft for me. And then I'm gonna just tuck it up this way. This is important to know, especially if you're gonna be selling this, you don't want those sharp edges on for your customers. 
at all. Uh, no. Yeah. And so, you know, again, that's also, you're going to take your time to put it on, rub it and, and just make sure that you're, you know, turn it on your finger and make sure that there's comfort. You definitely can run your finger through there and just make, you know, test it before you try it and then put it on and make sure that you're comfortable with it. I kind of made this a little too small, but it fits, it fits nice on my pinky. So I love pinky. it. I am, <laughs> I am like, I'm about to pull out and I got tons of beads and wire and some needle nose pliers. So, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something about that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What this did y'all think about that? Oh, I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Oh, no, this, is, this has been really fun. I, this is my first time, um, you know, showing what I do behind the scenes live and in person. So I appreciate everybody for uh, being here with us this, today. I do, too. I do, too. Did anybody do another ring? Miss Molly, did you do another ring? Let's see. Let's see. Replace by life. Let's see what Miss Molly over here doing. Uh oh, Ooh, yes. Uh -oh. Look at her. Look at you, Miss Molly. Miss Molly. Y'all don't that. know about me. <laughs> I, I love, love it. It's beautiful. That. It's beautiful. I oh, love Miss so Molly and I are going to be matching today. We're going to be rocking our, our, our pinky rings and, you know, sitting with our fingers up and everything. I love it. I love it too. I, I love it too. Miss Tracy, you have, let's see what you got. There you are. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. I love that. Amazing. And it goes you have you done yes, it exactly. Well coordinated. I love it. You Fabulous. never did it before. It looks great. It looks like you did. That's so cool. I love it. It's the it first looks, time. That was her first time. It looks amazing, girl. It looks so good. I love that. Woo, yep, I'm excited. Too. Miss Imani, did you make something? Hold it up to the screen so we can see. What did my princess make? Ooh. Yes, honey. Yes, I love it. Look. Good yes. job, honey. Good job. I love, I love it. That's right, Doug. <laughs> Pump it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I love, love it. it. I love it. Well. <laughs> Here, here we are. Listen. Oh, let's see. Lakita, you did you want to? Let's see. Replace by. Oh, let's see. Oh, yep. There you go. She fancy. She fancy. I like she it. Fancy. I like it. She fancy. I, I love like it. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's now, awesome. Isn't it awesome? Let me tell yes. you what's awesome. You are awesome. <laughs> You did an amazing, amazing job tonight. Everybody in the chat, Thank let you. her know how amazing she did today. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Tell us what, are you doing a class? I can't remember if you tell me you're doing a class. I don't have a class schedule yet, yet. yet. Mm -hmm. but once I do, I will post it on my Facebook page, which I believe the link will be in the comments. I will be posting it on my Instagram at Kobu Creative. And I will also be putting it on my website, uh, www.shopcobluecreative.com. <laughs> Let me tell you something, girl. You rock. Thank you. Um, Thank you. you absolutely rock. And I am super excited about <laughs> what's coming next for you. And I listen, I can't, hold on. Why is it not playing? Hold on. We got to do your theme music. Hey. All right, you stood in your power today. <laughs> you gave a lot to someone else. Now people are gonna know how to make some beautiful jewelry. Hey, amazing class, right? Okay, we got another one coming up. Yes, everybody. We got another one coming up right behind this one. Hopefully you yes. registered for it. We are gonna be learning about sublimation. We're gonna be sublimating a tumbler and a coffee mug. So make sure that you register, go over to the Michaels website if you haven't and register so you can get at that one at the top of the hour, okay? Two o'clock, our time, my time, one o'clock central. I'm gonna see you back here in a few more minutes, all right? Thank you, Orion, you rock. Thank, Thank you, everybody. In. I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Happy Juneteenth. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.